Soil released from carbon may heat planet even further. A 26-year-long soil study has unearthed something rather concerning. According to new research published in the journal Science, soil releases more carbon when heated to a certain point. In 1991, scientists placed heaters 10 centimeters under soil in the Harvard Forest in Massachusetts. They artificially heated that area over 26 years. Scientists observed the heated soil release 17 percent more of its carbon content compared to unheated soil. If warmer soil produces higher carbon emissions in forests around the globe, then the global warming process could speed out of control. Stick around for more climate news that might make you soil yourself. Coral bleaching is killing the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists are warning that vast swaths of Australia's stunningly beautiful Great Barrier Reef may never recover from repeated coral bleaching. The Great Barrier Reef is 2,300 kilometers long and covers an area of more than 344,000 square kilometers. This is similar to the size of Japan. However, studies suggest the reef is under threat from repeated bleaching of its corals caused by rising sea temperatures. Corals are marine animals that live in compact colonies of tiny identical individual polyps. Coral polyps produce a limestone skeleton. Layering that takes place over hundreds of years by millions of polyps creates a scaffolding, better known as a reef. Most corals get their food from the microscopic algae that live inside their tissue. The algae convert energy from the sun into food, mostly in the form of sugar. It is the algae that provide coral reefs with their vibrant color. Coral bleaching mainly occurs when a rise in sea temperatures causes the algae to produce toxins. In self-defense, the corals then expel the algae, which exposes their limestone skeleton. Corals can recover if there's a subsequent drop in water temperatures, but without the algae, they risk starving to death. Scientists have warned for decades that burning fossil fuels releases greenhouse gases that warm the oceans and put coral at risk. In turn, that jeopardizes the marine ecosystem, including fish that rely on the reefs to protect them from predators. This could in turn spark a food shortage because hundreds of millions of people worldwide rely on reef fish as their primary source of protein. In order to reduce ocean temperatures and give bleached reefs a chance to recover, greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced. Greenhouse gas emissions can be cut by reducing meat consumption and using solar and electric energy instead of fossil fuels. So if we want future generations to enjoy the beauty of the Great Barrier Reef, it seems it really is up to us. Here's some news that won't give you a buzz. Popular pesticides used on common crops prevent bees from laying eggs and could eventually cause bee populations to die out. That would be a disaster for us humans because we rely on bees to pollinate much of our food. A group of pesticides known as neonicotinoids are used on some of the most commonly grown crops in the US, including corn, soybean, and canola. According to a study in the UK, the neonicotinoid thiamethoxam is harmful to bee populations. The study showed that in laboratory conditions, bumblebee queens exposed to the pesticide were 26% less likely to lay eggs. However, the study said that other factors in the wild, such as the loss of wild flowers, parasites, or climate change may also have a harmful impact on bee populations. Without queen bees laying eggs, there would be no bee colonies, so the results of the study are likely to lead to further calls to restrict the use of pesticides. Neonicotinoids were temporarily banned in the European Union in 2013, and the EU may now decide to make that ban permanent. Tree-killing beetles set to invade northern U.S. and Canada. A recent study shows a warming climate has expanded tree-killing southern pine beetles' habitats and forests in the northern U.S., which means southern Canada could soon be ravaged by the pests in the coming decades. The southern pine beetle, one of the world's most aggressive tree-killing insects, has typically only lived in Central America and the southeastern United States. Thousands of adult beetles can attack a tree in just two months by carving S-shaped tunnels under the bark. It is predicted that the beetles should gradually spread north along the Atlantic coast all the way up to Canada's Nova Scotia. By 2080, the pest could infest red and jack pines, which extend across more than 270,000 square miles in the U.S. and Canada, which is roughly the size of Afghanistan. 
According to the U.S. Forest Service, infestations of pine beetles have caused an estimated annual timber loss of $100 million from 1990 to 2004 in the southeastern U.S. Brazil agrees to let people dig in the Amazon. The Brazilian government has opened up a massive chunk of the rainforest for mining purposes. Brazil has removed the protective status of the National Reserve of Copper and Associates, which straddles two northern Brazilian states. The area is 46,000 square kilometers large and is believed to be rich in gold, copper, iron, and other minerals. The government opened up 30% of the reserve and said that mining would only be permitted in areas with no conservation controls or indigenous lands. According to estimates, approximately one acre is destroyed every second in the Amazon, and around 20% of the rainforest has been destroyed over the past 40 years. Brazil has said it plans to open up 10% of all protected rainforest areas to mining in an attempt to stimulate growth. 